please be sure to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and hit the bell for notifications for new videos. And if you have any stories that you want narrated on the channel, please send them to the above email. Enjoy. I've always had a fascination with abandoned buildings. Ever since I was old enough, I would gather my friends and we'd go on a trip to any neglected construction sites or haunted neighborhoods we could find. The adrenaline of being somewhere you don't belong just stuck with me. I would occasionally go exploring on my own, just for the extra rush. Loneliness just adds a powerful vibe. You could say I was an adrenaline junkie. Recently, I went on an exploration that made me rethink my adventures. It was a nice summer day in Chicago. I was visiting some friends who went to a community college there, and one of them had given me a tip on one of the abandoned buildings that I should check out. Of course I was going to have a look. It would almost be crazy for me not to. It was already the afternoon, nearing nightfall. My friend mentioned that the place was an abandoned parking building that was underused and was inevitably closed off. I had packed myself some Lunchables, a flashlight, and some water. The second I arrived, I got immediate chills. Sure enough and fitting, the description it was an abandoned parking building. I forgot to mention, I also brought a Polaroid camera. I know it sounds cliche, but I was a horror fanatic, and if I caught any paranormal incidents I could use the physical pictures as proof. The place was fenced off so I couldn't park my car inside the building. I snapped a picture of the outside of the building, then proceeded to climb the fence. I dropped to the floor on the other side, and immediately, a chill shot down my spine. I felt unusually nervous. I've never felt this worried on any of my previous ventures. I started on my way to the building. As expected, it was creepier up close. There were long vines that streamed down the sides of the building, and hung off the various ledges. Tall grass surrounded the area, and small weeds sprung from small cracks in the cement of the bottom floor. Usually, you'd find graffiti or even broken glass bottles or anything in a place like this, but not here. The place looked as if it was built and then left alone and never tampered with. I assumed that it was simply because I was on the first floor. On that note, Nothing resided in the area. It just looked like an empty parking lot. I decided to move up further, so I made my way to the second floor. Upon entering, I immediately noticed the change in architecture. There was a wall that divided the entrance of the floor from the other side of the room. In the middle of the wall where I was facing was a door. A door? Why was there a door? It wasn't even big enough for a small car to fit through. I chuckled at the idea that this was probably the reason the building was abandoned. I pulled out my camera and took a picture. The small piece of paper ejected from the camera. I shook it, then inspected the photo. Nothing out of the ordinary. I placed it in the pocket of my backpack and walked up to the door and opened it. The second I entered the room... A putrid smell filled my nose. The smell was so bad, in fact, that I had to place my hand over my mouth and nose to keep from hurling. When I looked into the room, I saw something in the middle of the floor. From where I was standing, it looked like some sort of dead animal. The flies that darted around the corpse only further indicated that possibility. I hesitantly approached the middle of the room, while covering the bottom half of my face with my shirt. Upon closer inspection, I realized that the thing was in fact a dead, mutilated pig. It had claw marks that streamed down to the lower half of its body, which was entirely missing. You could see the guts of the animal strung out of its body. I immediately received a sensation of utter horror. By this point, I had definitely seen enough. I turned around and made my way to the door. I placed my hand on the doorknob and was met with the realization that the door was locked. I sat there at the door for a good three minutes, frantically pulling the knob to no avail. I stepped back and took a deep breath. Now calm, I began to consider my options. 
I pulled out my phone and was met with no bars. Despite this, I knew I could still call 911. However, no one picked up. The phone just kept ringing. I tried not to panic, as it wouldn't help anything. Even so, I was still shocked. I thought that maybe I could jump off the side of the ledge. I walked over to the half wall of the building and peered over. My eyes widened with fear. Some way and somehow, I was multiple stories higher than the second floor. Not just that, but the building seemed taller than before. I looked up to see the unbelievable. The building reached up above the clouds and so on. I couldn't believe my own eyes. I pulled out my camera to snap a shot of what I was seeing. The second I heard the click of the camera, a loud noise started going off behind the door to the room. I could see physical movements on the door that looked like pounding. I stumbled backwards, almost falling down. The door looked like it was almost giving in. I stood up and began to run to the ramp that led to the next floor. When I got to the ramp, I began to hear another noise. I turned my head to see that the pig that was once dead on the ground was now looking over at me, squealing mildly. It should be dead, but yet it was screaming Bloody Mary. I didn't give it another thought and continued up the ramp. Like before this floor had a wall and then a door, I opened the door and as I began to enter, I heard the door from the floor below me burst open, followed by heavy thumping footsteps rushing up the ramp. Adrenaline surged through my body as I quickly ran into the room and slammed the door behind me. I stumbled backwards and fell on my back. I sat up with my heart pounding, looking at the door. It took me a moment to realize that I no longer heard the footsteps and no longer heard the squealing pig. I waited a few seconds before laying back to catch my breath. I felt no inclination to inspect the room behind me, nor did I want to sit back up. I decided to close my eyes and rest for a bit. I don't remember how long it was before I fell asleep. I awoke to crickets and a warm breeze that tickled my cheeks. I sat up dazed and confused for a few moments before I jolted to a standing position. It took me a moment before my eyes adjusted to the darkness. I saw the blue hue of night. The moment felt beautiful, despite the previous events. I reached in my backpack and grabbed my flashlight. I noticed that my camera was already tucked into the backpack. When I flicked on the light, I realized that I was back on the first floor. Without even thinking, I rushed to the fence and practically threw myself over. I stumbled into my car and pulled out of the area and back on the main road. When I finally could catch my breath, I looked into the rearview mirror. My eyes caught the building for three seconds just before it disappeared behind the tree line. It looked completely normal to me. It was no longer a skyscraper that reached through the clouds. I felt a moment of relief. When I got back to the hotel I was staying in, I threw my backpack on the bed and sat down beside it. I thought that maybe it was all a dream. Maybe I passed out due to the heat and had a nightmare. I opened my backpack to eat a Lunchable when I saw them. Three Polaroid Pictures I pulled them out and flipped through them. The first one was the picture of the abandoned building that I took when I arrived. The second was the picture of the door that I saw when I reached the second floor. So it really did happen. When I got to the third photo, my eyes widened. In the photo I expected to see the building reaching into the skies, but instead I saw myself standing next to some words on a wall that looked as if they were written in blood. The words read, Never. Come back. I since burned the pictures and decided to forget the whole experience. I lost the will to ever explore abandoned buildings again. I'm writing this now to get it off my chest and maybe even warn any people who plan to explore an abandoned building in the future.